Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Everything is Bad Newfangled Motion Picture Show. Hello, one and all, and welcome back. It's been a while. Yeah. It's been a bit. Uh, I'm Niall. And I'm Nolan. And I'm building a Lego. Yep, and everything is awesome. I already built my awesome. Lego. Yeah, I see that. Uh, why am I why am I building a Lego, Nolan, and why have you built a Lego? Because we went to the uh, early screening of Lego Movie 2 where we got free Lego. Yep. They gave us... Uh, a th- a Lego kit from the movie. It's it, it's a, an uh, Emmett minifig. It's, it's a yeah, an Emmett minifig, and something that's key to the story. I don't think it's a spoiler to say what the, to describe it. I mean, it's it's a yellow, orange, and fuchsia heart yeah. made out of Lego bricks. Uh, yeah. If you remember how the the first movie ends, um, where the Duplos show up because now he's got to let his sister play. Uh, so when the the it picks up right where that left off, and um, and it's like, whoa, hold on, guys. And then he builds this uh, heart out of Legos and and gives it to them. Yep. And, and so it, that that's where it, that's where it picks up. Yeah. And, and this it, is the heart. Yep. And it becomes a it's a pretty significant thing uh, by the end of the movie. Yeah. We'll get into that in the spoiler part because, as is tradition, the new Fangled Motion Picture Show is a spoiler free review first and foremost. And then we'll give you a spoiler warning and go more in depth into it. Not that there's a, there's like one, th- one thing to spoil. I would say is like a real spoiler, and it involves the heart. Um, but I mean, you're pretty easily able to tell what is going on. Yeah. Um. Whereas, the the first movie, um, while you're watching it, it starts to dawn on you that this is a child playing with Legos. And then that became a big part of the plot, you know, and then is fa- he and his father playing and everything. This one, from the outset, you know it's children playing with Legos. Right, so it's a little it's a little different uh, because of that. And as a result, um, it feels less clever. And we were talking about it earlier, and it, it feels less clever, I think, just because we've seen it already. You know, we we know the punchline. Not line. that this is like a rehash. No, it's not a these. rehash, but we know the idea already. We know it's a kid playing with Legos, or in this case, a couple of kids playing with Legos. And and, and this is all their imagination and stuff. Yeah, and it's it's still cute and heartwarming and heartfelt and, and funny and funny. It's very it's still a very funny movie. Um, a lot of jokes in there for the parents or the adults going to see it, like us. Not not like adult level humor like sexual innuendo or anything but references to movies that the kids won't have seen <laughs> like all the diehard references yeah there's a bunch of diehard references <laughs> well it's this running joke and not just reference to diehard but bruce willis bruce willis was a character in the movie as, as a Le- bruce willis yeah a lego minifig of bruce willis voiced by bruce willis but he keeps showing up like in air ducts yeah like he pops up in air ducts and it's it's kind of this running theme where like the one kid is older now this is you know a few years later the bulk of the movie takes it's place five a few years year, five, five years, years later so the the boy is a little older now and so you know he he's wanting to he's more he's seen more adult movies and they're sort of influencing his imagination when he's playing with legos a bit more you know it's like yeah he, he probably saw die hard on tnt or something right there's there's that, movie i haven't i haven't had television in a while is tnt still a channel yes TNT okay still a channel um in fact uh we were over at our parents house today and dad was watching tnt oh okay um yeah and yeah there's like movies here and there that you can imagine like when as a young teenager you know he's now it's five years later, so he's, he's probably he's like 12, twelve or something like that. 13, maybe twelve or thirteen in there. Yeah, so he's seen. He looks at all. I mean, he's taller than his mother. Character. Yeah. Um, it's the same actor, I believe. Anyway, um, the movie is five yeah. years. Uh, it's been five years since they made the movie. Yeah, the first one came out in twenty fourteen, I believe. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you can see where like these are movies that at that age you've probably he's probably seen now that he hadn't seen when he's playing the first time. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, there's a lot like little references to the things like, um, various, like back to the future, Bill and Ted, uh, movies. There was a reference. Well, I, I don't want, I want to get too much into that until we get to the spoiler part. Cause it might, 
what I was about to say might spoil a, a fairly major plot point, but um, yeah, there's there there was reference to movies that are definitely well. There's like, like this running gag, like they'll make a reference to a movie and Emmett will be like, "I don't get it." And they're like, oh, that's a movie that only cool older kids get to see or something like yeah, that. Yeah, like there, there was a reference to The Matrix. And, and it's kind of like, like they're probably movies that he's seen, but he like lords it over his little sister who's too young to have seen them, you know? Yeah. And so it's that kind of thing like, oh, yeah, that's a movie that cool older kids get to see. Uh, you're too young to have seen it or something. Right. <laughs> you know? I got my heart done. My, my Lego heart. I went with the, I went with the smiling Emmett. I have the game face in it. They're, the head is uh, double faced. They, they do that on Legos quite a bit now, where they have a face on either side, then like yeah, a usually, helmet or a hair just piece. Two different facial expressions of the same face. Yeah, and there'll be like a helmet or a hair piece that covers it up. So Emmett has like a a little sort of ha- smile. It's like if you took it's sort the, of an awkward smile. It, it's like if you took the original basic Lego head that's just the two dots and the smiley face, and just sort of tilted like rotated the mouth up a little bit so it's more of a smirk instead of a smile yeah but it's kind of an awkward sort of smile then there's like his game face where he's like grimacing like Arr. so anyway there yeah that i don't i don't think they'd be handing those out at like the regular showings probably of Lego probably movie. not maybe if they have some left over on like the opening night i don't know they had a lot of boxes there at the theater though so that's why i'm wondering if maybe they'll have some yeah, left over I mean, you saw opening. them stacked up back there right yeah uh, so they were they were handing these out at the this this uh, preview or yeah early screening early early screening it wasn't a preview yeah it wasn't a preview it was um I think they like on the marquee was the Lego Movie two awesome early screening or something like that yeah uh but yeah anyway back to the review of the movie uh yeah it's, it it's um it's still it's still fun and clever but I think since you know it, it's not it doesn't come off as Clever, but I think it's because you've already, having seen the first movie, you ex- you're still ex- you're expecting a lot of the stuff. So it's yeah, and but there's yeah. a lot. Um, but they like they don't rehash jokes or anything. No. Um, except they do they do continue to make reference to all the different actors who have played Batman. Yeah, and that was pretty funny. Like I, I, we we were watching through, and then like the last one they they said was Adam West. Like the last one they mentioned that i recall in the movie was adam west and i was like i think that's everyone right that that, that was all the well like that one sequence they were like talking about how he's like got the lips of um val kilmer, val kilmer and the, the and the suaveness of of um george, george clooney, clooney and like the the hotness of ben affleck and yeah they were just like like batman just talking about like all these like aspects of him but he keeps comparing him to the different actors yeah, that like the dark him. brooding of michael keaton yeah something like that it was it's, again it's one of those things that where it's like for the adult like all the adults in the theater were laughing at this joke right um but yeah so uh it's it's just, i really enjoyed this movie um uh, I, I didn't enjoy it as much as the first one again because like you know we know the big reveal already going into the movie and in fact, they don't even like try to hide it or anything. They're like, there's a lot more um, going, to, like, cutting away to what's going on in the real world and back. Um, yep. Like the sh- you see the Lego stuff, then it'll cut away to like what's really going on in the real world with the kids, and then back to the Lego stuff. Uh, yeah, but yeah, I mean, so it's covers like it's already there. But I mean, there's not a big reveal to be had. You've seen the first one. Yeah. So. I mean, it's it's still a really fun movie, really funny movie, and well, they, I, they also they also kept making jokes about all the different roles that Chris Pratt has played. Yeah, uh, uh, there's that one that's in the trailer where he's like, "I'm a galaxy, uh, galaxy, galaxy defending bending, cowboy or, archaeologist, raptor or dinosaur trainer or something." Yeah, but they also make reference like, "Yeah, I was I once uh, I was once first baseman on a." baseball team and like all this stuff you know other roles that he's had yeah so that was that was pretty funny again it's something that's you know if the adults going into especially if they're movie buffs would find that pretty funny um and there's i mean there's a there's a bunch of jokes that are like that where it's 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 jokes meant for the adults not that it's adult humor but that you know most kids will not have seen these movies that they're referencing right and so that that's sprinkled throughout the whole movie, um, as well as there just being a lot of, 
a lot of uh, jokes and, and gags and stuff that kids can get. And so... The same sort of humor that you've exp- right. seen the first one. The same sort of humor. Right. Uh, and the... So this movie, if you if you have kids and you want to take your kids to see a movie, this is it. I mean, this is the best you're going to get all year, probably. Yeah. Uh, and because I I think it's a movie that can be enjoyed by adults and kids equally. Like I think both I agree groups can get the same level of appreciation out of this movie. Yeah, I think so. And uh, I want I want. Every all the one, post-apocalyptic. all the post-apocalyptic vehicles. I want those all as sets. <laughs> so cool! Man. I would just drop like a whole paycheck well, on so all of them. They kept, they kept making reference to other WB movies, particularly like they made a lot of DC references because th- this is a Warner Brothers produced movie. They did reference the fact that there are Marvel Legos, though, which I don't, I don't want. But they're not in the movie. <laughs> they're not in the movie. But yeah, I, I don't want to ruin that joke. That was a really funny line, uh, but. And they they reference like the Matrix in in you know these other Warner Brothers movies, and I really wish because other that, than the visual style of the early part of the movie, there's not any like really direct references to Mad Max, right? Which is a WB which, uh, movie, which I would have I would have loved some more direct references to Mad Max. I was hoping there'd be like a doof wagon as one of the vehicles. Well, you look at that. So you, you think about this. So this is all the mind of that kid, the boy. Yeah. Who made, you know, all this Apocalypseburg. Like, there's like, you know, you see in the trailers, there's the, the Statue of Liberty on its side, like from so Planet of the yeah, Apes. Yeah, he's seen, he's Planet, seen of- Planet of the Apes, at least one of them. Yeah. He's seen Road Warrior or Fury Road or both. Yeah, he has to have. You don't come up with those vehicles. Probably and Fury those, Road and because those, figure, and those mini figures. Right, probably Fury Road because they were definitely more like uh, extra. I think is like the best ac- the best uh, adjective. Yeah, you know, it, so like you don't come up with that. Like a kid just doesn't come up with something that looks like Fury Road without having seen Mad Max. Right. So I I really wish they would have just made dropped a reference in there because it's clearly what they're going for. Yeah. Uh, but that was <laughs> that whole sequence is pretty great. Uh, one thing I thought it was, was kind of interesting is like like all the stuff that's like his his sister's Legos. They're those Lego has that line for girls where the the minifigures are like different proportions and a different shape yeah they're, they're more they're more like doll human shaped and yeah and so yeah. The, the idea is that this is something for this is like basically like playing with dolls but lego instead yeah you know so like they yeah they they have the like all the all the different like clothing pieces that fit on the on the menu on the minifigs and you know they have like play sets that are like the spa and the mall and the you know the coupe speed uh, the coupe uh, sports car and stuff like that uh, that's all the kinds of things you see like barbie products with yeah but yeah they're, they're that line of there's like three three main lines i think that lego did for girls there was one that's like very barbie like then there's like the fairy one and there's like a little sci-fi one yeah, and this seems to like pull from all yeah those pulls different from all types of them. of them. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so I I just I think this was a really good movie. This was as good of a sequel as we could have asked for from the Lego Movie. Yeah. Um. And you know, it's, so it still has all the charm and like really really great animation. I mean, the textures on everything is perfect. You know, like all the close-up shots of Emmett, where you see like the seams and the hair piece, and like the little like the textured roughness on the hair piece, or where, like the like paint's that. starting to wear off, and oh yeah, we're like yeah, the paint's like starting to wear off on on his uh, jumpsuit, yeah, stuff like that. So I I think they just did a really excellent job making a sequel to that movie. It, yeah, it was really good. Uh, so I mean, is there anything else we can say without spoiling it? No. Um, when you get the chance, uh, definitely go see the movie. It comes out uh, February eighth. Yeah, uh, and um, wide release. Definitely, yeah. 
I, I I mean, I figured since they were doing this this early screening, they were pretty confident. They were pretty confident in the movie. They they were justified in that confidence. Yeah, and um, it's I think it's it's uh definitely justified, and it's a very good movie. Uh, uh so spoiler warning. Yep, spoiler warning right here. Um, mostly I think our spoilers are just me talking about some of the, our favorite jokes <laughs> well i so i i want to say the the thing that i was like i think it's a spoiler to say what the heart's all about mm. the heart is emp- or, uh, i keep call- i don't want to keep calling her empress queen whatever what what was it whatever i want to be or something? whatever want to be i think it's like what hold on let's see whatever i think it was whatever want to be whatever whatever what- want to be yeah whatever a wannabe yeah whatever a wannabe right yeah that is the heart yeah that's uh that's tiffany haddish's role right um anyway yeah so um like you can you can tell like what what started basically the 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 plot is like okay now we're playing with our sister she brings in her duplos and stuff and little little siblings never play right you know, you get frustrated with them because you're like, you. My my guy, my ship shoots you with laser beams, and she and she's like, oh, I eat laser beams, like that's impossible. Yeah, and like like Metal Gear's like, oh, that's impossible, or like Batman throws the batarang, is like you missed, it's like it hits, it hits the figure, but she's like, oh, you missed me, I did not miss you, you know. So you can get that. That's like he's getting frustrated with his sister, uh, not cooperating. Yeah, not with the not game playing right. Right, and that that happens with siblings. I can attest to that. <laughs> I don't think it was ever that bad, was I? I don't know. Well, well, okay. I never, I never took your Legos and covered them in glitter paint. Yeah, and so basically, like as as a child, children with Legos are kind of destructive with them. Uh, and so you can you can tell like every time it, it goes over, like every time they built something pretty. The Duplo showed up and destroyed it. Yeah, the Duplo it. showed up and destroyed it. The, the aliens from... The aliens... From uh, the Sistar system. Yeah, so which is his sister's bedroom. Right. Uh, the aliens showed up and destroyed it. And so they just gave up on build, rebuilding anything pretty, so they wind up with this post-apocalyptic Apocalypseburg. Right. Uh, which is way cooler than, than Bricksburg, or whatever <laughs> it was called in the... It's, it's pretty cool, though. Um, and so... Yeah, then basically, uh, so the when uh, the aliens show up and take some people away for a, like this, like, you're invited to this wedding. Basically, his sister wants to play with him, but he's just like ignoring her, won't play with her, and she's like, you're, you know, and like is it revealed throughout that she's like, it's her, her big brother. She looks up to him and she wants to play with him he just doesn't want to play with her and so that's kind of the the impetus for everything right so i I will say though that his so yeah and he he ends up like smashing the the place that she had built that was the wedding so i will say uh, it was really impressive place (laughs) it was i will say that his reaction may be a little extreme but not unjustified because she like literally like Puts glitter paint on the Lego minifigs. Yeah, she takes his Lego minifigs. Takes his Lego. Well, I guess they were his dad's. Now his Lego minifigs. Well, there's a, there's a whole um segment in this town, and it's like where every time they like every time the aliens took somebody or they sent someone off to to go f- into the Sistar system to go rescue them or whatever, they never returned, and they find where they are or Emmett finds where they are and they're like they're living in this town and they're all covered in glitter yeah and and then well because um uh lucy gets you know or lucy and and friends so lucy benny metal beard batman and oh uh unikitty all get like captured and taken to the Sistar system where they get like changed mm-hmm. and part of that is them getting covered in glitter paint and like when i saw that i was like well no wonder he's pissed at his sister yeah come on yeah that pissed me off too 
Like that time Niall stole my Warhammer figures and covered them in glitter paint. I was pretty pissed. Yeah, because that ever happened. <laughs> so well, give me ideas. <laughs> anyway. I'll, oh, I'm sure yeah. someone makes a rabbit so, can that is glitter spray. His, and I, uh, I could just like take care of it all in one fell swoop. His, so yeah, he was not unjustified in his anger, but his reaction was kind of extreme. And he he builds a spaceship shaped like a fist, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, it punches the... the it punches the giant wedding cake, uh, which was a really impressive yeah. set. I mean, I would never build anything that looked like that, but it was it was well done. It was impressive looking. Just like, I mean, all the all the sets in this were impressive so looking. So this, this other character that Chris Pratt plays, um, Rex Dangervest... <laughs> is actually Emmett from the future from a future where he's abandoned by his friends under the dryer under the dryer or in uh undar the planet undar of the dryer system yeah something like that uh and so he had to like toughen up to uh to survive and so he he decides to go back in time to to make Emmett more <laughs> yeah, like so himself. He, he takes parts from the DeLorean, Bill and Ted's phone, in this order, the DeLorean, Bill and Ted's phone booth, the Doctor's TARDIS, uh, the bicycle thing from H.G. Wells. And a hot tub. Oh, no, whatever, whatever, oh, yeah. whatever, 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 uh, whatever Skynet's using nowadays. And a hot tub. And a hot tub. <laughs> and I was like, well, that's it. They covered all the bases. That's all the movie time machines, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, and what's funny to me is like, I don't know. I don't know if they've. I don't think they've made Terminator Legos, right? No, they've definitely they they made a DeLorean Lego. They made a DeLorean Lego. They made Doctor Who Legos. Did they make Bill and Ted Legos? I think they may. I don't know for sure, but they may have. <laughs> um, they that might have. I feel like they might. I think that might have been a one of those Lego creation things, like those uh, the light cycles that you got, you know. No one's looking this up right now. Yeah. Oh, that's on the stage at the end of the movie? Yeah, that's a Lego Ideas set. That's it, Lego Ideas. Yeah. Yeah, I, I thought as much. So, yeah, so that that's pretty funny to me that, like, see, see if they did any uh, Terminator Legos. <laughs> I, it wouldn't surprise me if someone made the time machine from Time Machine as a Lego Ideas thing as well. Uh, no, that, that, that nothing like official. No. Yeah. All right. But like. anyway, so uh, well, they didn't make a hot tub either. So <laughs> they maybe made. Well, a hot they tub. didn't make a hot tub time machine. I'm sure there's been a hot tub on a Lego set before. Right, but it, that was that was pretty great. That covered like every every uh, time machine I can think of, and. From a movie. From a movie. Yeah. Um, unless you, well, I don't. I don't like to think of that that movie timeline that was. Or what about uh? I mean, what about just spaceships in general though? Like, you know, uh, the the Romulans going back in time at the beginning of the J.J. Abrams. Yeah, well, that wasn't like a purpose built time machine. That's true, but anyway, so yeah, that was that was a really funny joke. Uh. So he took all those parts and built a time machine, went back to 65 million years BC, rounded up a bunch of velociraptors. For his the crew his spaceship. The crew his spaceship. Which are subtitled through the whole movie, by the way. Yeah. Uh so that that was pretty funny. Yeah, that was great. Um some of the other Oh man, I, I loved when they, they showed the scene where they sent the Justice League off to go take care of the to go oh, investigate yeah. the sister. And they're like loading up on a spaceship. It's like su it's like Superman, Wonder Woman, and the new Aquaman. Yeah. And and, and it, Aquaman is and Aquaman's like good. he just goes, My man when he gets on the spaceship. <laughs> he goes, My which, man. which is Jason Momoa. Yeah, it was Jason Momoa voicing him. And so when they're they're talking about like like who do we send off to the sister center? Well, all we got is classic Aquaman. <laughs> and, and, and generic, uh, generic off-brand Mary Poppins. Yeah, like Larry Bobbins or something like that. And it was just like, He's this, like, I believe, I believe a spoonful of salt helps the medicine go down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, like, that's such a weird, like, if you think about that joke coming from this kid, this is a weird joke to make. Yeah. 
But, uh, <laughs> yeah, so it's just, the movie's, like, just full of references like that. Oh, and Green Lantern showing up, too. He's like, oh, hey, guys, almost forgot me. And so everyone's like, oh, yeah, we did. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> I'm literally a lantern. I mean, how could you miss me, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was Jonah Hill, huh? Yeah. Yes. And Channing Tatum was Superman, I believe. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he was. So, yeah, this movie's just a really fun And movie. despite what IMDb says in the trivia section, Gal Gadot did not voice Wonder Woman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's this Kobe Smulders? Kobe? Kobe Smulders? Yeah, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, she was Maria Hill in the Avengers movies. Okay. At Agent. Right. Uh, so, okay. That, that's like the only thing I would Maybe she'll know her from. pop up in Captain Marvel. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe. Anyway. Um, but yeah, there's just, it's still a, it's just a fun. Uh, oh, spoil, funny... spoiler warning in depth. Uh, Maria Hill's apparently in Spider-Man Far From Home. So, oh. she's popping up in that at least. It doesn't look like she's in uh, Captain Marvel, though. Maybe she hasn't joined S.H.I.E.L.D. yet. Yeah, maybe. But anyway, so, I I cannot I cannot recommend this movie enough for right now. Because, like, there's nothing else out right now. <laughs> I mean, not, beyond yeah. that, it's just a really great movie. But, it, God, what was the last, the last movie we did was... Um, Welcome to Morrowind. Welcome to Morrowind. And that was a, that was a shitty movie to end, like, the... the marathon of a movie every week on yeah and then stuff kept getting in the way so we haven't done a, gone to a movie in a while yeah well stan and ollie came out this week we'll probably not get a chance to see it this week yeah. then maybe next week um but i really want to see that movie i hope it sticks around long enough yeah i hope so there's there's been like next to no promotion for that movie but by all accounts, I, from what I've seen, it looks like a good movie from the reviews I've seen on it. Uh, but yeah, anything else to say about this movie? Just just go see it. Go see it. Play with Legos afterwards. Yeah, go go see it and uh, have a little pretty heart Lego. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, our next movie then. Need like a little um, Lucy figure to go on the other side of the heart. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So the next movie we're seeing, uh, we might be seeing How to Train Your Dragon next weekend. That's also a, an early screening. Movie. Yeah, uh, the third one, that is. And we might be seeing Stan and Ollie sometime in the next week. Hope uh, hopefully we'll find time to do it. Uh, but then the next movie after that for us, I think, is Elite Battle Angel, looks like. Which, this movie needs to be good, because... If this movie isn't isn't successful, uh, no more anime movies. And I'm convinced anime movies can be good. I mm -hmm. mean, Speed Racer is proof of that. Yeah. People always forget about that when they talk about how no one's ever made a good live action adaptation of an anime. Speed Racer proves that. And I would argue that that Death Note is a bad live action movie because the anime is bad. Uh yeah, I agree. I mean. Willem Dafoe can't be bad in a movie, right? Sure. Uh, but yeah, so if we don't manage to see How to Train Your Dragon 3 next weekend, that is the next movie after uh, Alita Battle Angel. And the next month starts off with uh, Captain Marvel in the second week of the second weekend of the month. Uh, and it's, I mean, it's looking pretty light until we get to like, what, May, June sometime? Dumbo is in March, which we'll probably see, but I don't kind of don't really care. Shazam looks kind of I mean it looks fun. Looks better than most of the other DC movies. Hellboy looks iffy. Like so were we were we promised like a dark closer to the comics Hellboy? And then the preview that came out a few weeks ago just doesn't look like that at all yeah so yeah i mean the the springtime always kind of sucks for movies it's always light i guess they figure people are doing stuff on weekends 
Uh, but that, that's what we've got coming up. So if any of that sounds of interest to you, uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel, or don't, don't, yeah, whatever. Doesn't seem to really affect anything on YouTube these days. Who knows what the, what the algorithm wants, right? I don't even think YouTube knows. Yeah. Uh, but, so if you subscribe, you know, you can maybe be alerted when we post those new videos. Or maybe not. I've just taken to checking certain channels, like, on a weekly basis to see if they've posted anything. Yeah. I don't know. If everyone keeps saying ring that notification bell, so I don't know if that does anything or not. But... Huh. Yeah, maybe, probably. I'll have to look into that. But, uh, so, yeah, until next time. Yep. Thanks bye. for listening. So long. Toodles. And everything is awesome. It is awesome. Thank <laughs> you.